I'm Scott Allen Miller, and today we are heading to the port city of Mazatlan, Sinaloa, Mexico, for a walking tour of the old town as we head out from central into the Pacific waterfront. So let's jump straight into it. Come along with me as we take a walking tour of the beautiful resort city of Mazatlan. All right, we are out in the Plaza Machado. I'm taking you along for a walk. These shops have all just set up. We've been out here all day and uh, it's kind of sunset now. These are just coming up in the last hour or so. All along the right here, all the little hotels have restaurants. All along here, very, very nice, very European. Most of the day, this is just an open plaza. I'm surprised that these shops only come up at night, but and this restaurant as well, only open in the evening. We actually had lunch at this one on the right here. Oh my gosh, it was amazing. So I'm recording this. I'm out for a walk, getting some exercise. It is our first day here in Mazatlan, Sinaloa, Mexico. And uh, I've done a bit of walking around the community. It's absolutely fantastic. What a beautiful town. But there's tons to see. This is a big city. I had no idea. This is over half a million and that's a it's an old estimate. So my guess is it's much closer to three quarters now. It is it is very large. And uh, my plan, I have a very limited schedule here in Mazatlan. So I'm trying to show you guys as much as I can of at least the old part of the city and the Malecon. But we did a little basic exploration today, earlier. Oh, this looks like photos going on. I'm gonna turn around and walk around. All right, we're walking east now. As the sun goes down, beautiful, beautiful old town here in Mazatlan. So we did a bunch of exploring. We walked the Malecon a bit today, Dominica and I, and it was really nice. I want to get up, I want to get up early in the morning. That was incredibly loud. And, uh, and get you some, guys some really good footage tomorrow. So my plan, my plan is, I probably won't go live for a few days, but my plan is to record a lot of Old Town Mazatlan tomorrow and really give you a bit more because we're gonna have more time to, to get to know it. And then we're heading up to do some cool resort stuff also here, which I'll record what I can for you. So we're gonna have a little bit of Mazatlan coverage and then we're heading out to uh, Cancun coming up pretty soon. Here's a place for sale. That's got a lot of, a lot of cool potential, an amazing part of town, older place. But I mean, you fix that up, that's got, that's got lines, you know, it's got style. Obviously, this has not been up, up taken for a while, up kept up, but uh, put in a nice garden there, some lights, fresh paint, and uh, it can be a gorgeous spot. And I mean, right in the heart of the old town, like what a place to have. This area is amazing. So I'm going to tell you about my day getting here, because what an adventure we had with that. So. I actually have to go back two days at this point. So I started my journey here in the morning, two days ago, uh, in Orlando. The kids and I uh, had to go up to Rochester, New York, dropping the kids off so they could hang out with my dad uh, immediately and then with their, their grandparents in, in Frankfurt in a little, in a few days. Uh, so they're staying in New York for a while. We're, we're down in Mexico for a wedding. So. I had to take them up to drop them off. They weren't comfortable traveling on their own. They could travel on their own, but they're not comfortable quite doing that. Uh, it really is a long way to go and they don't live in the US anymore. So they don't have that US comfort that you might have if you if you lived here full time. So it made sense. So we decided I would go up with them. Dominica would stay back. She could just sleep. We're exhausted from our time at Disney and Universal. So it was a... Uh, just an ugly box there, uh, a good chance for her to recover and I could handle the travel. And she doesn't really like to fly if she can handle it. By the way, like every single corner is just the cutest little restaurants and shops here. Everything is gorgeous, little hotels everywhere in the old town. 
And the traffic really has not been bad at all. So, so it was just, it would just worked out. And I don't mind flying. I can fly all day, every day. And while it's, it wears you out, sitting on a plane doesn't bother me at all. So it worked out fine. So we had to leave the Drury on the morning two days ago. So we had to check out at 11. They were completely sold out. They would have let us stay late, but they're totally sold out because it's spring break. So they're so busy. So there was no way to, to do that. They had to, they had to have us out at 11 so they could get the rooms ready, but we didn't have to go to the airport until about three o'clock. So that makes for a kind of complicated afternoon because oh, you can't go to the airport like five hours early. What are you going to do? They don't even let you check your bags or anything. It's just a big mess. And Dominica's hotel wasn't ready yet. So we went to Disney Springs and hung out there for a little while. Got some ice cream at GR Deli, which is crazy expensive. It's like $18 for an ice cream. Like, oh my gosh. But it was really good, but it wasn't that big. And the price was just nuts. And... And then we got some pretzels because Chana had been wanting a pretzel. So we hung out for a little bit there. And of course, going to Disney Springs is, is always just, it's time consuming. Right, by the way, another totally different, this is a much more modern place, but still, what a location for sale or rent. Anyone looking for a house in the old town? You could be here. Nice neighborhood. We're getting a little bit away from the classic old town as I head east. I may uh, switch streets and take you guys down some other places, but I want you to see what Mazatlan looks like. And you can tell from the map where we started, so it's pretty easy. We're just basically going east from the Plaza Mercado. And uh, so we, we spent some time in, in uh, Disney Springs, and then Dominica's room was ready at the Hampton before we actually had to leave. So we actually had a little bit of time we were able to go to a hotel. So as soon as that was ready, we called a lift. And this is funny, so from the other day, uh, our Lyft driver, Casey, we had had a really good conversation about living in Nicaragua, and he was like, wow, this is really giving me the, the bug to go travel, and it's really interesting. And then it's the first time ever with Lyft or Uber or anything like that that I've gotten the same driver again. I'm going to zip across the street here. Someone's making a lot of noise. And uh, so we talked a bit, and my kids are like, why didn't you tell them about your vlog the other day? And I'm like, well, you know, I hate to just always go around plugging the vlog. I know that's hard to believe, but... Uh, I try not to do that all the time, and I wasn't wearing my shirt for it or anything. So I told him about it. He's like, oh, I'm definitely gonna check that out. And since then, he has subscribed and said hello and everything. So he's watching, probably at this point. So hey, Casey. But uh, we, uh, so he took us over to the Dominica's hotel. We hung out at her hotel for about an hour. They gave us a little bit of time to just, you know, relax and sit and wait and not have to worry about too much. And then the hotel shuttle took us to Orlando Airport. So we're still in, in Orlando. Got to the airport. That was easy. So this is still two days ago. And uh, we waited, got our flight, took a spirit flight up to Rochester, went fine. Uh, we were um, a little bit early, actually came in about... 20 minutes early, which is fantastic. Look at this beautiful house. So this is not a completely different style to the one that is available, but this one is kept up and you can see what a cute, cute potential this kind of place has. And what do we got here? Parking, I guess. Uh, some kind of club, maybe a gym, I don't know. So we got up to Rochester. It's only about a three hour flight, not bad at all. Uh, my dad and my Aunt Sharon and Uncle Leo picked up the kids that got them right from the airport. They came to the airport, so I just walked the kids outside. They pulled right up, handed them off. We had a bit of luggage. All of our big luggage that we had for Disney went with the kids, so I dropped that off with my dad. So, all, so I only have a backpack at this point. Dominica has some carry-on luggage down in Orlando that we're going to use for our trip to Mexico. So we've got everything staged. All of our luggage is staged to minimize how much travels around. Ooh, check out this cool mural. Hoping you can see that well. Yeah. This is a cool old building. Definitely needs some attention, but that could be something really cool. All right, let's head north. And uh, by the way, notice old fashioned pavers, very nice. That's where we just came from. And uh, so once they were dropped off, dad took them, we're not gonna see them for about 10 days. I got, uh, I waited in the airport for about an hour 
for a shuttle to come get me from my hotel from the Hampton in Rochester. And this is funny. So I've been trying to figure out where I wanted to stay in Rochester because uh, I'm just spending the night. So it's going to be very fast turnaround. And hopefully you guys are enjoying the story with the walk and talk, the view of, of Mazatlan. And uh, someone's, someone's yelling at me, but I don't know from where. Uh, and so when I was choosing the Hampton, I was also considering, well, the, the Hilton Spark is cheaper than the Hampton, but it didn't have a, a hotel shuttle. So I'm like, ah, I don't know the Spark. So I decided not to do that. I'm like, the Hampton has a shuttle. It just makes life easy. Of course, it would have been cheaper, I'm sure, to get it like a, a lift instead, but I didn't want to have to deal with that. And you don't know, maybe it'll be more expensive and you got to do it twice. So it does add up, so you don't know. So I, I just, I'm like, having a shuttle makes things easy. But I had to wait a really long time for the shuttle, but who knows how long I would have waited for a Lyft or an Uber. So, you know, it's all, it's all fine. But, all right, should we head back? Should we head back west? Is the light gonna be bad? Now we got some clouds, this might be okay. Let's go back, let's go back this direction. We'll see some more of the city. Hopefully it looks good on the GoPro. I'll keep it, keep it kind of at an angle for you. And uh, you can tell we're in more of like the real city as we lead up into the old town. There's a lot of old town, but there's also high rises. Like there's a bunch of city here. There really is. We were so surprised coming in from the airport how long it took to get in here and how many big buildings and stuff we saw. But uh, so it turns out we drove past uh, as the, the shuttle was taking me to the, to the Hampton. We passed the Spark and I realized the Hilton Spark is actually the hotel I managed long ago it got sold to to Hilton and converted to a spark which is like their entry level their cheapest hotel as far as I know and it used to be the Wellesley Inn and Suites and when it was the Wellesley Rochester South in the 1990s that is when I was one of the managers there and was there for years um, I also did uh, sometimes I managed uh, the Rochester North and sometimes the Wellesley Inn Buffalo uh, all three of them but the South was my main location that's where I was based it's where I started and uh, it would have been really cool to have stayed in my own old hotel. Like, how weird. And it's been so long. I haven't been in that hotel in decades. There was too much noise coming from that car. I had to, had to skip ahead a bit. So I have not looked at that hotel, not thought about it in 20 years, 30 years. Way closer to 30 years, I guess and I had no idea what had become of it. That would have been so weird to have just been brought to my own hotel and been like, wait a minute, I, I worked here for years. Anyway, that was, just, that was just weird. But so I ended up going to the Hampton, had nice evening, nothing special. It's the first time though that I've checked in at a Hampton and they had my name on the TV when I came in. I'm like, oh, that's so cool. Because like they didn't do that for me at the Hampton I stayed at. <laughs> but uh, uh, it was really nice. Oh, check this place out. Whoa. Talk about some cool architecture. That'd be quite a house to have right there. Wow. And we're, we're basically in the old town. Oh, this one right next to it is for sale. And it's similar size. Like, I mean, this, you, you know, you gotta fix that up, but that could be amazing. Cute place over here. And uh, so I got into the Hampton it was very late. By the time I got in, it was like 9.30, almost 10 o'clock. So I was tired. Remember, we left the hotel at 11 o'clock this morning. We've been at Disney for a week. We did Disney Springs. I moved from place to place. There's a doggy in the window. I wonder how much he is. He's so cute, they should make a song about that. Look at you. You're on camera. You're so handsome. And we, uh, so I was just beat. So I ordered in food. I wanted to go walk in to get food, but it was cold and raining. It was like 45 degrees and raining. I'm like, I'm not walking in this. I've been cold everywhere I go for a week because everything is so much colder than Nicaragua. Oh, this is the first I've seen these buses. We will let them go by. Mañanitas. The Galaxias. Oh, no, I'm gonna pause because this is loud.
Y lo llevé. We hopped around a little bit so we could get to some light and oh, oh what have i discovered oh we're going this way what is this this is gorgeous <laughs> what i didn't know this was here when i started filming i literally hit the button on the camera i was like this looks like a nice spot <gasps> there's a path so i ordered in dinner i just got red robin and when i went on uber eats it said that the number one thing ordered on red robin was their impossible burger so i'm like well obviously you gotta try that that's really cool so i got their impossible burger and honestly it was really good so i had a delicious dinner from red robin and basically went straight to bed i did actually edit a few videos uh, and get them uploaded so that was nice but that was kind of it very calm chill early evening hanging out in the hotel with some takeaway food now i do have to mention on the flight in we actually had some really bad turbulence. We were roughly over Geneseo and we went through a storm front uh, and it was not expected. And the turbulence was, was pretty bad. But the thing that really was bad is we had a drop. We fell so far out of the sky. I've never fallen so far on an airplane before. It was, I wouldn't say it was exactly scary and the kids were fine. They're like, oh, that was a little bit rough. But for me, it triggers my vertigo. So it was really bad for me. But I didn't, I didn't end up getting vertigo. It was just really a close thing. Like it was, it was potentially bad, but we did okay. You can see the hill of Mazatlan right in front of us. That's right up against the water. This side is the towers and, and the cheaper houses. The other side faces the ocean. It's really cool. We're gonna see that hopefully on tomorrow's show. All right now we're gonna take more of this really cool path that just seems to have been this I can't believe I hadn't noticed this before this is I hope you guys can really see how cool this is my camera's not lighting up for me to tell what I'm seeing but so we dropped so much and I, I actually had them kick on the emergency lights as if we might have to evacuate like it was it was definitely a bit and some of the people behind me were saying that they had been pulled out of their seat we fell so far so it was it was pretty dramatic hoping that doesn't happen again did not like that would not like to repeat but it was other than that a pretty good flight and a pretty good evening but keep in mind i traveled the entire day my morning was packing up at one hotel moving to disney springs moving to another hotel flying dropping off the kids doing a quick bit of work and then getting a little bit of sleep but i gotta give it up pretty early in the morning not super early but i gotta get up at like six because i gotta get off to the airport because i'm flying all day on the second day which is yesterday at this point that i'm filming this there's a cat waiting at the gate for someone to let him in no one's letting him in the poor kitty and uh so yesterday the day after all of this i got up early in the morning did a really good job showered got down they forgot my shuttle that i had booked the night before so there's a little bit of scramble on that not bad they they got someone to take me but it was it was a oh, I hope we can find someone. And then when they found him, he's like, oh, I hope I can find the van because they lost it. And they didn't have any coffee. So I was like, oh my gosh, this is, this is quite the morning we got going on. But managed to get to the airport. And it's such a small airport. It was easy to get through really quickly, got through security. 
got onto my flight and flew back to Orlando. Did not have the turbulence this morning, so not a big deal. And uh, they did they did give us a warning though. They said, we heard the turbulence is gonna be really bad, so be prepared for some really rough turbulence. We're like, oh no, but it ended up, I mean, there was some, but it was absolutely tiny. Oh, there's more of this path over here. Okay, now we're going in circles, but we're gonna do it. So good flight, uh, actually sat next to a guy. We were, the flight wasn't packed, so they moved us around. So we had a, a nice open space. And I sat next to Nick from Nunday, who went to high school at Keshequa. He's been a chef, but he works in Geneseo now. So he, so he works right around the corner from where my, where my dad lives and went to you know high school with people I knew. So we chatted the whole way down to Orlando. So that made that flight really nice and quick. And uh, I learned a lot about like the latest restaurant scene back home, places to check out when I'm visiting at my dad. So it was all very cool. The different bricks on this part of the trail. Weird. And uh, who knew this is what downtown old town Mazatlan was like? I had no idea. Uh, so that part went well. I got down to Orlando. Uh, got into the airport and Dominica had timed it. She knew I was running a little bit early. So she zipped over to the airport uh, from her Hampton uh, and got there about one o'clock, 1.30. So she had a really nice relaxing morning of being able to just wait around and do nothing and do some recovering because our feet hurt, our legs hurt. We're just generally tired. Like it's been good. It's just been such a long week. All right, the camera shut off and says I ran out of battery, but then when I turned it on, I had 44%. I have no idea. I'm here at the park with the Biblioteca, which is pretty cool. So I'm gonna wander a little bit, but obviously we're having battery problems. So we'll see what happens, but maybe it just got really hot. I don't know. So we walked a little bit. The sun is a little bit lower anyway. So Dominica got some, some chance to relax and, and she went and met me at about 1.30. So she had a nice relaxing morning. I've been flying all morning. So I was up early. She was up late. I was flying. She just took a, a shuttle to the airport, but we met at the Iro Mexico desk around 1.30, got checked in, had a bit of time to kill, hung out in the airport, went and got some uh, impossible whopper. Um, I hadn't, I had gotten, a, I did get a really quick breakfast while I was uh, at the Rochester airport. No worry, but nothing, nothing special, nothing big. And now it was in the middle of the afternoon and we weren't going to really get dinner for a long time. So that worked out pretty well. So we ate at the airport and uh, uh, then we got on our flight. Our flight is about three, three and a half hours from Orlando to Mexico City. Uh, so did that, so it was, that was about 5.30, so we had about four hours at the airport, and we got in through security and all that relatively quickly. Now it's Orlando, nothing is smooth, nothing is quick, but it wasn't bad, right? Orlando is just a mess, but that's what you would expect from a Florida airport, and, and especially at spring break, they're just not prepared for anything. So all their lines are unclear, nothing is labeled, no one's paying attention, lines are not continuous, they have like breaks, so people are wandering through lines. Like it really is like, one of the things that you get generally in the US that's really good is like good cues, just like England, right? You get people stand in straight lines and they follow directions and they... All right, yeah, so legitimately having battery problems and now it's getting dark. I do have to say, walking around in Mazatlan, one thing that really stands out is that I am the youngest tourist here. Everybody, at least all the Americans and Europeans that are here are so much older than me. Like, I haven't seen anybody my age or younger, like everyone is at least 10 years older than me, if not 20. Like, this is definitely not a place that is attracting a younger crowd from what I can see. This is a gorgeous house back there. Check that out. I walked past it earlier. I was like, whoa, that's a really cool house. So anyway, we got on our Iro Mexico flight to, uh, to Mexico City. That went just fine, a little over three hours. Very comfortable, had uh, shows on there. So I was able to watch a bunch of Brooklyn Nine-Nine, just I've seen before, but it always keeps me entertained. And there's a new reboot, it's not actually a reboot, of Night Court, for those who remember it from the late 80s, early 90s. And John Laroquette is back on it, playing himself. So it's actually a continuation of the original show with as many of the cast that they could bring back, which is just John Laroquette because he's literally the only surviving member of the original cast that was a major role, which is really sad in a lot of ways. But that is back and it was not great. Uh, the star of the show, the, the person who took over as the judge, I don't find very good at all. Like really shocking that they went with her, but like the idea is okay. But overall, the cast is weak. John Laurel Kett's the only one carrying the show. Uh, but th that it's a continuation of such a good old show and one that I grew up with 
is uh, is pretty cool. Okay, I'm, I'm walking on this side because the light's better, but I do want to swing the camera around a little bit and show you, because I'm kind of stuck. This side of the street is pretty gorgeous. Look at some of these cool older buildings here. Old downtown Mazatlan. So we got to Mexico City. Immediately, Dominica was hit with the altitude. It is really high. If you <laughs> go look up how high Mexico City is, if you've never flown into a city like this, it is enough that for a lot of people, it kind of takes your breath away when you when you get there. Just getting off the airplane, you're like, oh, just getting my luggage seems like a lot of work. And it's it, you're just running out of air. These streets, some of these are just gorgeous. Both directions, although. That way's better because you're getting the sunlight. Look at that. Look at that sunlight down there. Yeah. So uh, we got into Mexico City and we ended up having, this is where things started to go wrong for us where our evening got really long. We got there and our flight was all like, it was like good. Like, okay, we got a couple hours, but not tons of time. We had to go through security like I did in Orlando and then back in uh, just because of the way it works. They do all their international transfers in Mexico City. So uh, we did that. Got out, and we're like, okay, we definitely have some time. This is our chance to get some food. We found a little bakery, just got like cinnamon rolls. We didn't do dinner, we just got cinnamon rolls and some coffee, uh, but this was after we had waited, like we had to go for a really long time trying to find our gate. Nothing was labeled, it was really hard to find stuff. So that was a huge pain, but it was fine. It just took a really long time and Dominica was so exhausted that I was running around the airport uh, trying to find stuff because I'm pretty good at the altitude and, and she really suffers with it. So. I was running around trying to deal with that stuff. So I was really tired because I've been running around so much, a cool place back there. And uh, so we finally got into like our gate area. We're sitting by our gate. So we got dinner, got coffee. We're like, okay, some coffee. We're gonna be feeling okay. Get some, get some calories going, get the caffeine going and, uh, and our flight won't be that long. So it'll be okay. Well, then we moved to our gate. Then it was taking a really long time. Then they changed our seats. Then they had us line up and we just stood in line for the longest time. Then they had us D-line and we're like, uh-oh. Then they moved our gate. Then they moved our gate again. So there was a lot of just moving around and dealing with stuff, worrying that we spent a lot of time worrying that we weren't gonna get to fly. Dominica's falling asleep. She cannot stay awake at this point. So she's missing gate changes and stuff. If I didn't hear it, she'd had no idea. Um, and I had to convince her of every gate change. I'm like, no, no, they definitely said we have to go to another gate. No, I don't think we, yes, we really gotta go. So there was a bit of that going on, but went okay. So we were about almost two hours late, finally taking off, uh, which not a huge deal on its own, but as it was, we were getting into Mazatlan really late. So that was going to be a little bit rough. We got a cool park that I'm walking past here and some cool buildings as well. No, gracias. And you can see the kids park here as I come by. You can see there's a lot of live music. You can hear people like tuning up at this time. And then I'm going to show this cool building behind me is really cool. And this art gallery, I'm going to have some good light, but yeah, I keep showing this whole park behind me is great. And uh, so we're getting into Mazatlan at like 11, 1130 at night. We're already worried about all the logistics that were going to happen at Mazatlan because it was so late and we couldn't get a hold of the hotel. They said it was 24 hour check-in, but you know, everyone says that. And then when you get there, you can't find anybody. So we're worried about that. We don't have any ground transportation. Once we get there, we're just hoping to get something from the, the airport. And it's just, it's just a lot to be worried about at the last minute. I'm gonna have a surprise for you guys here in a second. And the light is getting fantastic though. Look how much brighter it is now, stepping out of the old town a little bit. And uh, so we're like, we're starting to get nervous about it. So instead of arriving at 11, we're arriving at like 1.30 in the morning. So we're like, oh no. So we get our luggage, which we, we didn't have any, uh, we, we were just carry on. So that part was easy. Got out, there were no taxis, none. There were no Ubers, none. We paid for a taxi with the airport but they didn't provide one. They're like, oh, too bad, sorry, we got your money, screw you. So not happy at all with Mazatlan Airport. Like they definitely scammed us. Uh, oh, what a gorgeous sunset we got going on here. Oh, wow. So first of all, there is Mazatlan. I'm gonna try to get across this road here. And uh, so we got, so we got some traffic, so I'll talk while they're coming by. 
And uh, so we're really upset. Finally, we found a van that was willing to take us with some with some other people. So we paid for a private taxi, but luckily a shared van took us, took pity on us and took us. And so it took us a while to get to our hotel. So we're, we were so late by the time we got in, but the people we were taking with us, we took this old French woman, very old, and we dropped her off first, which is good. We dropped her off. And when she got out of the van, she just stepped out of the van and just face planted right out of the van. We're like, oh my gosh, like she planted hard. And uh, no, I'm not gonna, oh my gosh, the traffic here. This is gonna be really tough. Uh, so she hit hard try, coming out of the van and we're like, oh no. Okay, everybody's moving. I have to get out of the way. And uh, then her friend that she was staying with came down and uh, oh, almost had a chance. Uh, and she came down, helped her, she opened up the garage door, they started taking her luggage. And then while they were doing that, we started pulling away and her friend who was drunk and also easily 80, uh, just fell over and hit the van. So she like really lucky she didn't get run over because, okay, we're just walking into traffic. All right, this is how we do it. And uh, all right, I gotta take a minute and show you guys this. This is where we are. And then there's looking north in Mazatlan right there. This place is gorgeous, gorgeous. We're gonna do a lot more of this tomorrow, but this is the sunset going on. So talk about a wow. Like, I don't care that I'm all blown out. Let's just, let's do this, all right? I can do this and then I look good, but then you didn't miss the, so. So she fell into the van. We jumped out, helped them, got them into the house. We're like, you, what are you people doing? Like they had uneven sidewalks, drunk heels. Like it was so foolish. So they're just falling over. So we did, we took care of that. Uh, and then we got to our hotel. So it was almost three o'clock in the morning when we got to our hotel here in Mazatlan. And luckily someone did come down. We had to call a few times, like five. Finally, someone came down, let us in. We got checked in, no problems there and uh, went okay, and Mazalan, even at night, we could tell was really cool. We saw the streets of the stringed lights over them. It was beautiful. I'm hoping to get some of that for you guys for tomorrow's show. We'll see, no promises, because I've, I've gotta really get out and get some stuff, and hopefully this wind isn't too bad, but it's just so gorgeous out here. I don't care about the wind. That's just, sorry, you, sometimes you gotta put up with it. But uh, it, was, it was a long, adventurous day, but here we are. We're actually in Mexico getting to spend some time. We're in Mazatlan. And uh, these views, this ocean, this sunset is all absolutely fantastic. We are loving this. So uh, thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe if you'd like to help support the channel. You can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. And as always, post on social media. Tell your friends about the show. Stay tuned. Coming up, I'm going to record it tomorrow. We'll see sometime in the next few days. We're going to do a bunch of walking around in Mazatlan to show you more of the town and, and talk about what's here. And especially along this Amalie Cone where I'm standing right now and uh, give you an idea of that and I will see all of you tomorrow.